You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Happy New Year, everyone. It's hey, the year Happy New Year. 2021. Let's hope it gets better yeah. this year versus last. Uh, so in today's episode, we answered live questions from listeners of the show. So they called in. We answered their questions and gave them some free stuff. So you're going to love that part. That's the second half of the episode. Uh, the first half, which is thirty about 39 minutes long, was the intro portion where we talk about current events. We have fun conversation and we mention our sponsors. So let me tell you what happened in the intro portion of this episode. We open up by talking about my aging and everyone's making fun of me. It's a good time. <laughs> uh, then we talk about the nunchuck ninja that Justin saw outside. He was uh, looking fierce. Really crazy. I talked about laughter yoga and how it may actually treat IBS. Ha ha. Uh, yeah, joke's on you. Then we talked about the workouts that we're doing in the morning. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Justin, Adam, uh, and myself, and Doug, have been working out in the morning together and bonding. It's like a, a time. family. Then we talked about the COVID stimulus bill and where all the money is pretty much going. Uh, we talked about Peloton and their acquisition of Precore. It's a pretty cool. Still a good buy, we think, uh, in terms of their stock. Um, and then we talked about our current diets, how we're changing our diets. All of us are kind of in the mood to improve our body composition, which got us talking about one of our sponsors, Magic Spoon. Now, Magic Spoon is a cereal company that makes uh, lots of different cereals that taste like the kids' cereals that you had when you were younger, except Magic Spoon has no sugar and is very high in protein. This is quality protein. We're talking about whey protein, dairy protein in the cereal itself, so the macros are amazing. It's a wonderful meal to have when you want to have a treat, but you don't want to have it's a, a lot great of substitute. a lot of sugar. Um, now, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount on any of their products. Go check them out at MagicSpoon.com forward slash Mind Pump, um, and then use the code Mind Pump for uh, free shipping and uh, I believe a discount. Oh, and by the way, if you go to the Instagram uh, page of Mind Pump, the Mind Pump Media Instagram page. Right now, we're do doing a Magic Spoon giveaway. So go on there, leave a comment, tag some people, and you might win some free Magic Spoon. Leave some blueberry for me. Cereal. Um, after the intro, we got into the live questions. We had a lot of fun there. Um, and before the show starts, I want to let everybody know that the MAPS uh, December promotion that we did last month to close out the year, we're going to be extending for a full week into January. So let me go over that with you. There's three workout bundles for three different types of people. Each workout bundle is about nine plus months of exercise programming. So it's all your workouts mapped out and planned out for you with the exercises, the sets, the reps. There's videos teaching you how to do the exercises properly. So here's the three different programs that you can sign up for, the three bundles. The first one is for beginners. It's called the new to weightlifting bundle. The second one is for intermediate lifters. That's the body transformation bundle. And the third one is advanced. Uh, this one's called the New Year Extreme Intensity Bundle. Now, all of these come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and they all also come with one year of free access to our private forum. So you can ask questions. You can post pictures and videos of your lifts to get critiques. You can have great fitness and health debates. There's about 3,000 people on this forum, and you get one year of free access Go check everything out. Again, there's a week left for this. It's at mapsdecember.com. Again, that's M-A-P-S, December.com. We on, Doug? We is on, man. Uh, look, Doug, he's not, he doesn't have his headphones on. I'm yeah, ready, no, but I, I guess he's not. <laughs> talk about headphones. headphones. It's all talk, <laughs> you don't no need headphones to yeah, talk. Yeah, there you go. Grease it up. Yeah, huh? yeah, Oil that mother. Nice and greasy. Oh, dude, Oil every day, Sean, this is, this is the reason why, listen, when we... When we're all 65. He's about to talk shit right now. Yeah, when we're all 65 and I look 64. <laughs> <laughs> that's you, the reason. Yeah, and you look 90. That's why. No, no, here's what happens. I figured, <laughs> I figured this out. I look older and then I start to look younger. Mm. Um, it hasn't happened yet, though. It's, <laughs> it's going to happen. That's what you're counting yeah, on? Yeah, it's like, it's uh, like this. It goes like this. Like and, then, you, yeah. and then you're like here. And then, and then I go like this. And then you can keep going. Like out. you've looked 70 for 30 reversing years. Reversing the I've, youth. I've looked <laughs> 70 for 30 years. A long years. time. So once you when, hit, I look 70, when I'm 75, I'll still look 70. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know, when I was, did I ever tell you guys? That, so uh, when I managed my first gym, I was uh, almost 20. I was 19. Mm -hmm. And. I was signing up a so like this couple, this member or whatever, and we were talking and and uh, nice nice man. Uh, it was a husband and wife, and the dude's like, "Oh, you're new to the you know Selena Selena's was the first club I managed." So I'm like, "Yeah, it's, I've, I've, I live in San Jose." He's like, "Dude, we got to go hang out or whatever." Super cool guy. 
He's like, we can go to the bar and I'll show you this, whatever. And I'm like, oh, I can't, I, I can't go to the bar. He's like, oh, you don't drink because of fitness? I'm like, no, I'm not old enough. He's like, no, get out of here. <laughs> I showed him my license. He almost fell out of his chair. Do you know how old they thought I was? How old? 32. <laughs> I was 19 years old, bro. Yeah. I thought I was 32 years old. That's funny. Uh, it's not that funny. You're mature. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, this will be all right when I'm like 40. I'll just, you know, I'll look younger. Yeah. Nope, still doing it. Dude, I wish you guys would have seen. I was driving to work this morning, and there was this guy, literally looked like it, he was part of the, the Foot Clan. Remember from uh, 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 Ninja, Ninja Turtles? Turtles? Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. He's walking on the street, all what dressed is- in black. He's got a, a hoodie on. And he's he's doubting a, a nunchucks, just just doing moves with his nunchucks, walking up and down the street. Is that illegal? I don't know. Aren't, like, nun, aren't nunchucks illegal here? Well, I mean, we're in California, so I mean, all everything's are, illegal yeah, here. Yeah, you're not even allowed. Like, breathing, you're not even allowed to kiss, is kiss, illegal. kiss your partner. Yeah, yeah, no. Adam, <laughs> eating is illegal. Actually, you're right, Adam. Walking outside is illegal. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> in California, right now. Stay in your basement, dude. Yeah. It, you know, it's fun. it's like it's getting to the point though where you're not even getting shocked anymore. Some of the yeah. stuff that yeah. you see, you know. Well, I'm just like maybe he's just like waiting for somebody to say something because he wasn't wearing a, wearing a mask. Oh, you know? dude. He's just, dude, I I saw I saw some. Someone jerking off. Uh, what? Oh, yeah, what? dude. Just what? Like, Dang. He was. You know, okay, so it's even more. Uh, so there's an uh, overpass on the way to my house, mm. and there's now become a, an encampment there mm. at the overpass. Oh, and oh. Uh, so I was driving by, and there's you know, I mean, I think he was jerking off. He had the hunched over, <sighs> shaking stuff something. going on. It's tough. Yeah, when you like live uh, next to uh, you know these encampments and all this, it's it's rough. Man. What's it like for you? Is it is it getting better, or worse? What's it like over no, there? No, it's so it's restructured. It always kind of like <laughs> what is that disperses mean? and then it's it moves in a new place, <laughs> you know. And so it's like oh, ew, I guess it looks like you know it's thinning out. No, it now it's like alongside the freeway. There's all these encampments like right alongside the road, and like everybody's doing drugs and you know all out in the open and. It's just, it, I don't know, man. It's not good. I, I've it never, is not good. I've never understood why we don't just like, you know, build a little house out of plywood. I mean, they're using tarps well, and like poles and like, it's not even like- Didn't they, they try that? Wasn't that in like Seattle? They or, did that. Yeah. They, did they do that? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like an entrepreneur uh, made all these like really cheap, affordable little like mm-hmm. uh, yeah. shelters and the government came in, destroyed them all. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! So, so, <laughs> so, so way to go! Yeah. There, I also know. I also that's know, hilarious. I know of people who who bought a bunch of food and was trying to give it to homeless people, and the city came and shut it down and threw the food away. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. Through the food I, away. I heard. I heard like, like none of this stuff. Remember makes how sense. it used to be really popular? Like people. Would, I mean, I know we used to do this when I was younger. You're like where, Nino Brown from uh, what's that? <laughs> what's that movie? No, well, New you, Jack City. You used to, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it used to be very common. Like, uh, and I wanted to do this, and I, th- I can't remember. Maybe it was you, Sal, or somebody said something to us, like, uh, you know, where we just like for Thanksgiving or something, just make a big Thanksgiving meal and stand out on the on the street and hand it out to people. You that- get shut down. Yeah, you can't do that anymore. No, you get shut down. That yeah. is so. It's, I know. It's it's infuriating. Yeah, but even if you build, is that because is that because like some homeless person? See, I got better right there. I almost said bum. Yep. Yeah. Some homeless person sued somebody who was trying to give chicken away. No, I think it's be- oh. I, okay. I, they say it's because of the safety of the. Of the- of the homeless people, oh, yeah. Say eating other trash can yeah. is way better for you because they get funding. It doesn't make it. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But I mean, and here's the thing: you could build the shelters, but there's a lot of mental illness. So I know also yeah. of places that did that, and it just ended up causing well, more problems. Well, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying you build the shelters, thinking that you're going to solve the homeless problem. It's just aesthetically, it looked better. Instead of having all these tents and people doing that, you have these. Literally, like I mean, frame it up with some two by four and plywood. That's it. It doesn't. I mean, it's that's better than tarp, mm. you know. And yeah, it would less look- more permanent, you know. They they keep moving them around. Yeah. No. No. What they did now is uh, the place that I was talking about is now the the city put uh, porta potties there. Mm. So now they put bathrooms there. So I guess they're going to be there. For yeah. A while. In in L A, it's there's like a whole like. There's like a blocks of it, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah no. Isn't there? It, there's, LA's there's a wasteland. Sixty thousand plus people, homeless people yeah. in wow. L A. It's a city yeah. over there. That's yeah, crazy. That hey, uh, I'm going to change the subject, but this is kind of an interesting study there, Red. So I'm always looking up gut health studies, things that can help people with 
irritable bowel syndrome because it's something that I've always I'm always battling with on and off. You guys know this about me, pretty annoying or whatever. Yeah, diarrhea butt. Yeah, so oh, thank you for yeah. spelling it out. Bubble um, butt. <laughs> which, but, no, that's not that's not what bubble butt means. <laughs> that's a different. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're bubble butt. He's yeah. diarrhea butt. He's not bubble butt. Bubble, bro. bubble e butt. He's okay. double cake right. butt. Yeah. Like, yeah. If he's a bubble, that's a big ass butt. Yeah. Anyway, so um, there was a study that compared anti-anxiety medications because anti-anxiety medications help a lot of people with IBS uh, because when you're anxious, a lot of it can can off, uh, can affect your, your gut. And you might not even notice that you're anxious, but that's kind of where it tends to get centered. So they'll give mm. people, you know, benzos or whatever, and they get improvements in their IBS. So they compared medi- medication, like anti-anxiety medications, to laughter yoga. You guys know what laughter yoga laughter is? Laughter yoga? Have you guys heard of laughter yoga? Is this a Connor Murphy play on us right now? No, Seriously. No, this is a real study. <laughs> is it? No, but that's like a, a true form of yoga or is this made up? It's real. And so what you do in laughter yoga is while you're doing your yoga, you ha, 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 ha. And you We're getting trolled right now. <laughs> Doug, will you look this up? Is there such thing as laughter yoga? Bro, I'll pull the study uh, up for Hey, you. this just reminded me, though. It doesn't surprise me. Hey, are you guys following our boy Connor Murphy over oh, there dude, right now? Of course. What's the name of the yoga he's doing? It's, he calls it... Uh, uh, Primasati or something? Yeah, something like Primasati, that. Permasati, yeah. Permasati uh, yeah, or some shit like that? How come he's never practicing up? with he, guys? He, he was it's always do- girls. Yeah. yeah, he was doing this one. Uh, what did he call it? I don't even... The name... It's like the dove wing or something. They're all just like... It's like a train of girls that he's got. Yeah, <laughs> he's got their legs wrapped around. Oh, there it is, Laughter Yoga International. Whoa, it's a global movement. Look at that. It's a global movement. Look I'm at- telling you. <laughs> so anyway, you laugh. Looks like a good time while you do it, and you make it. By the way, here's an interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, about- they look like a ball of fun. Yeah, they yeah. do actually. Uh, so here's the thing about laughter. By the way, if you pretend to laugh, you often will laugh for real. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if you're listening right now, and it helps you shit. Apparently, it, well, so here's the thing. You, <laughs> so I'm wondering where that transition yeah, is coming. Yeah, like where's the brown come well, in? Well, dude. So so they compared laughter yoga to anti-anxiety medication for IBS, <clears throat> and guess what? The laughter yoga did better. Wow. It actually worked better than the uh, anti-anxiety medications for uh, IBS. Oh, really? Yes. So if you guys see me laughing for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, because of that, have you looked into like what the protocol looks like? I mean, does it look just like regular yoga, but then you're just supposed to burst out laughing? All I've seen in the in the YouTube videos is people are like, ha, 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 yeah. you know, as they're doing. <laughs> as they're it's doing so stuff. funny because I've seen glimpses of this, like from watching all those like cult documentaries, you know, like they get into the you love that the stuff. naked yoga weird stuff, but yeah. then they, they start all laughing together and then crying like immediately after all together and holding each other and I'm like... What is going on? Yeah, you know, by the way, uh, you're right, Adam. He's hella into cult stuff. Yeah. But yeah. do you know why? Why? Because you and I a- are his partners. <laughs> 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 he must have, I'm he always must, on the lookout. He's, he's looking the, out for the like, signs. These guys, he, he's, these not guys sure, think, he, he's not sure he's in one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I swear to God, I must I'm like, be I got to make sure. I got to check all the boxes. <laughs> he's oh, all yeah. paranoid about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because like real easy turns into a sex cult. Yeah. <laughs> You just never know. That's your big, that's your big yeah. concern. Yeah, every time. Yeah. You just watch the trends. He's like, you guys. he comes home and he's talking to Courtney and he's like, oh yeah. man, my, my hip mobility is really good now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, well, what are you doing? He's like, well, Adam's doing this like inner thigh work Massage. on me. Yeah. It's yeah. really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> She's Weird. Like, we're getting a lot of audience, but you know, like, I don't know why. She's like, "What does he do? Are you sure that's not a? Are you in a cult, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's I'm, like, I don't think so. I'm fine. I don't think no, so. I'm just like, I mean, we do drugs before, but that's just to <laughs> yeah. loosen Dude, up these my guys hip. Kind of charismatic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, hey, um, I I want to tell you guys, I am having some of the best workouts ever with you guys. This, now that we're working out in the morning together, sometimes. Well, this yeah. is this we serious are, bro time. I believe we've already uh, passed the record, right? Of, like, <laughs> it's only been three workouts. Yeah, I, th- I think we have. I mean, I was I was talking consecutive. Like, yeah, I don't I don't think we've had uh, more than a handful of total workouts together. We all, we, we especially all- like like good workouts that we've been doing. Like we haven't been we've done some shit when we travel. Yeah, where it's like you know Sal goes over and does every machine. Justin yeah. goes and squats. Yeah. I go do mobility work. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. We've pretty, done some of that. Predictable. Yeah, yeah. We've done some bullshit like that. But like right now, everyone's on. We're a actually workout. working out together. Yeah, we're training, right? Which is yeah. it's a lot of fun, and I like what your idea 
idea about each of us kind of you know uh, picking the exercises for the day and doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because it's different. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's very motivating mm -hmm. to work out with you guys. It's a lot of fun, dude. This yeah. is this is awesome. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying it's, this. It's bringing it back for sure. It is. I'm enjoying this this process. Um, I you know I, I I don't work out usually with people. I worked out with Jessica. That's a lot of fun in the past. I've worked out alone. Um, but it's good to work out with people that are, you know, self-aware. We're doing our thing. Uh, so far, ego hasn't kicked in. Not going to say it's not going that to That will be the greatest. I think <laughs> we've already discussed this, close, right? Yeah, Off air. Yeah. The, the greatest challenge will be that, right? Like, is. Once we all start feeling good. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. right now, it's. E I mean, right Watch now, this. everybody is like easing their way in because, yeah. I mean, the amount of consistency and training volume that we're moving into right now is, is, is relatively, at least for me, it's. I, I've been training like. One two day a good week three day a week type of training volume yeah. few sets on muscle mm -hmm. groups so I'm definitely sore right yeah. now I'm really trying to manage this is like way more curls than I've ever done like ever. <laughs> so I have to be really cautious you know with how I move forward dude Justin's <laughs> arms are gonna explode oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, guarantee it because he's never done that I love it because as we're working out today even Justin's like he's getting used to the arm pump. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? He's like, I feel weird. Like, I feel all tight. <laughs> I can't, like, move him. Like, ah, I feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm standing like this. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. This is how we ease I'm him into the honest. cult. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's how we ease him Bodybuilding in. cult. Yeah. Yeah. Courtney's yeah. super supportive. Honey, aren't you going to go to the gym early this morning? You'll work out again? Yeah. <laughs> She's always biceps? kicking me out of the house now. Yeah. To get, get that going? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's pretty awesome. Dude, you know what I'm loving right now? Hmm. Are you guys seeing all the, the COVID stimulus bill memes? Oh, the $600 ones? They're what a joke! The Coles one had me laughing. That yeah, one it's like the, the next stimulus bill is going to be a Coles gift card, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Dude, did you see what the spending uh, was done on? I did don't, you guys see the breakdown? Dang, oh, please God, tell me, tell me. I want to uh, know what it all is. Right, all right, all right. So here. I'll give you some so of the nine hundred billion. First of all, so nine hundred billion was the total, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so here's here's where some of here's where some of it's like. Going. What is it? Okay, do the math for me on the stimulus. Like, how many? Do you guys know how many people are getting that check? Um, what number? Know. You know, not, Doug, well, so idea? I know, no. I know, six hundred dollars for every American yeah, is how not do you nine. It's not nine hundred billion dollars. It? Mm. It's way less. Yeah, that's what I'm the wondering. vast majority. So here's what goes: it goes. The office of the secretary gets forty-seven million. Homeland Security gets a million. Partnerships and public engineering gets seven million. Assistant secretary for administration twenty-two million. I mean, I can go down the list. Wait, wait assistant secretary of yep, what? Yep. Civil rights twenty-two million. Department of Agriculture one hundred and eight million. Go, and then there's millions of dollars that are going to overseas. In fact, uh, I can't remember this what country. Just silly. I can't remember what overseas what country we sent twenty three million dollars to for boats. That's what literally what we did. Boats. We're, I forgot where it was, but we're sending money over to this one country twenty three million dollars for boats. You guys realize this was a five thousand page bill. So the previous stimulus, right when they were trying to pass it. Wow. The Congress was like, oh, I don't know if we want to pass it. We got to read it. It was twelve hundred before that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one, which <laughs> which passed, but Nancy they, Pelosi prefers this. One. Yeah, it was five thousand page bill. Does anybody read all five thousand pages? Nobody Eight does. hours they were given. Eight so hours to read five thousand pages. They do it on purpose. Dude. And what they do is they inject. That's comical. I know they inject a bunch of. Uh, a baloney in that, right? So it's oh, you get six hundred bucks for each child too. Oh shit, I got three kids. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't think I don't think everybody gets it though. I think it's you have to make. No, I know not everybody gets it. You're not getting it. I'm not getting it. I know we're not getting it. That's why I want to know how many people are actually getting the six hundred dollars. There's a big portion of people that are not getting that so money too. Single people earning up to seventy five thousand dollars will get six hundred bucks. You know, this makes me – it's its frustrating because you have $900 billion. A small fraction of it goes to the people. Yeah. Uh, $600 after – Didn't they pass – like, so the government is exempt. You, you know, like, they, they were able to basically bail themselves out. Oh, yeah, totally. And, again, a lot of money is going overseas. There's a lot of Middle Eastern countries. Oh, am I reading money? this the, the second stimulus check will be phased entirely for single people earning over 87000 or married couples earning more than 170000 Seventy-four thousand. So they're actually going to relieve. They're going to go uh, to. I mean, that's considered upper class, right? If you're up there, I guess. Oh, yeah, and then six hundred dollars for each dependent child. So we know. So is so okay. So we know for a fact that there's another stimulus for sure behind this. I don't know. Oh, you I, don't know. No way. This this going to keep going. What well, if, I told. I mean, the, I sent you guys that the the webinar that Peter Lineman did that I thought was really good, and his prediction was to. Two four trillion more dollars coming. Just keep going. Yeah, yeah, four trillion more by the end of 2021 was his prediction. Well, I mean, technically, you have the because they're they're going to keep doing this until you know they say that things go back to normal. 
this vaccine, if it's effective and if a lot of people use it and it's safe, it's relatively safe, it's still going to take a long time uh, because uh, it, there's a lot of people that would need to get it. Um, they're, right now they're focusing on healthcare workers and then they're going to focus on people who Elderly. are at highest risk. It's going to take months and months before. Are you guys watching? I'm not. I have. I'm totally not watching. Like what, where we're at. Like with numbers per day. Like we had. Like I know the last time we brought this up on the show. I think we were uh, at the like had a record. No, I got fatigued with all that stuff. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. What about Sal's normal? I mean, I, I expect you to. You're like uh, Chicken Little. You yeah. Know, I'm so. a- <laughs> this guy's I keep my fall. finger on the pulse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what it's what, what, it's what oh, I do. That, that's where your finger is. So okay. for yeah. so for for the U.S., uh, yeah, we're still riding the the high wave. Um, and then for California, because that's where we are, right? So we could check California. I know California's still in first, um, and we had like a record breaking. Uh, it looks like it might be coming down. Though it's too early to se- it's too early to tell though. You know, kind of what's going on. So. Did you read the Arthur Brooks article that Jackie shared about encouraging people to still see each other? I didn't read it. Oh yeah, I didn't. Was it good? Yeah, it was good. I mean, cause I just in talking about. I think that we're. I, I think we don't realize how important that is. It's already like a. It's already a challenging time for a lot of people. Like a mm-hmm. lot of people report high stress during this time, as it is. Like it's mm-hmm. just a stressful time of the year. I mean, yeah. you know, we we talk about like or we see the the holiday cheer with lights and celebration but re- in reality like there's a large percentage of people that actually report like a lot of stress during this time of year and then adding in the fact it's, that we're being told to not see anybody It's a risk versus reward yeah. thing, okay? So, you know, I'll give you uh, let me give you an example. Let's say um, you sign up for an OCR race. Uh, OCR race involves lots of swinging and climbing and jumping and throwing and it's high intensity, um, and the injury risk is relatively high. Especially, it's very high compared to regular life, right? Mm-hmm. The odds that you'll hurt yourself doing an OCR race are s- thousands of times higher than you just going to work, sitting at your desk, and not doing it. But why do so many people do OCR race? And why do so many people who do the races, why are those people typically not your typical fitness fanatics, but rather your normal desk jockeys, right? That's The reason why they do it is the risk is worth the reward for them. Mm-hmm. They're at work. They're dep- and we knew this, you know. Uh, we went to our to an OCR race years ago, um, and we were blown away by the energy and the enthusiasm, and the value people got. And it made sense when I saw it because here you have a bunch of people working offices, feeling crappy, don't feel challenged or whatever, and they're going and they're definitely risking uh, their their bodies for injury, but the reward to them was so much more valuable. So I think that's the way you got to look oh, at this. Everything's been catered to our comfort. And it's just, you know, people just have lost that edge, that toughness. And, and to be reintroduced to that, it's like, you know, the human body is very resilient. Mm. We're forgetting that because we're not putting any work in the preventative process of it. Nobody's hyping that part of it up. Everybody's just stuck in the fear of everything that's coming at us. Like, you can do stuff about this. And it's just so frustrating because there's nobody in leadership that has any balls, you know, to come out and really, like, tell people what they need to hear. Yeah, I think it's just again risk versus reward. You got to figure that out, you know, for yourself. So, are you? Are, have you talked to your family? I know your family's all in stock and some of that. What are they saying about the stock market right now? Well, um, Peloton. Well, I know that there's some been some dips, uh, but Peloton. Did you guys see what Peloton did? Yeah, man. Yeah, so Pel- Peloton announced that they're going to be uh, acquiring um, uh, what's a Precore. It's a wow. four hundred million dollar deal. Huge. Yeah, big big deal. And uh, when that happened, the stock uh, skyrocketed. Now, I think Peloton's a good buy because I don't see the gyms recovering anytime soon. And I feel like Peloton's kind of a hedge against that, right? Yeah. So, well, that's interesting because what Lululemon uh, bought Mir, right? So, oh, did they? Yeah, yes. that, that's yes. another it, interesting. Like they're they're acquiring, you know, a bigger company, and you know, there's some competition there for sure. No, wow. it's interesting. I'm watching that race right now, so I th- I think it's a, I still think it's an incredible buy, and I think it's just a, you take a Precor's been around for a long time. Dude. They have that's a big company. Yeah. They have, and it's interesting because I don't know because Precor. They must have suffered a lot, right? From or feeling the pain from what's happening. Sure, that's probably. Gyms. I bet yeah. you they got a deal. Mm-hmm. I bet. I bet the buying them right now. I'm sure they got some sort of a deal for it because I doubt there's a lot of gyms ordering precore because precore. I, I would imagine their biggest money is made not direct to consumer, but to to big commercial gyms. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean that's most of their. I'm sure most of their sales. And so if you got if right now gyms are closed, there's definitely no gyms opening up. Mm-hmm. And normally in the United States. 
I mean, geez, just working for 24 Hour Fitness, there, I think we were averaging at one point like a gym a month or a gym every week yeah. that was being built. That's just one company. I mean, there's probably a gym being built every single day, which is huge opportunity for a company like Precore. Well, right now everything's shut down, so that's probably they took a huge hit. I would imagine, yeah. and I bet I bet uh, they got a good deal for them. Yeah, and dude, mm. I'll tell you, you know, I remember uh, that's how long I've been in the gyms. I remember when Precore first made their entrance into the gyms. It was the first time that I saw a machine completely take over. Like when I started in the gyms in, in 97, the cardio areas consisted of treadmills, bikes, rowers, and Stairmasters. Uh, and that was it. All of a sudden, they brought in these pre-core machines, ellipticals, and it was just, it exploded. And all of a sudden, it was the ellipticals, the pre-cores that made up a majority of the equipment. Were, mm. you, were you, did you start, you started Adam after that, right? Yeah, but it was right when it was, because I mean, I remember, because I remember we used to pitch it all the time. It was a no impact, right? Yeah, right. That's yeah, how, that was, low impact. that was the, that was the big selling point on it was, you know, that running on a treadmill, running outside was so bad for your joints mm -hmm. and your constant pounding and the elliptical pre-core whatever is, uh, took all that impact. So it was a great selling point. So I think that's why I went nuts, right? Yeah, I, I, I liked using them uh, quite a bit because of that. And then uh, there was- I and, couldn't do it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that, that movement is so weird. Oh, you never, I did big <laughs> time. <laughs> that was such a- uh, so dumb. Body, it's so lame. <laughs> it's, good, it's so oh, funny. Oh, man, never, Justin, Justin never just had, he has to look cool no matter what. I know. He, <laughs> you know what he loves, though? He loves the fucking, what's the bike? What's the stupid assault bike? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh bro, yeah, you yeah, can they, sprint on those things. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. That's way different. You can sprint on a pre it looks like a, you know what that one looks like the giant <laughs> that stupid bike like two inches that stupid assault bike looks like a, a giant version of the one my grandma used to ride around on in her living room yeah, you know what I'm saying those little white it's ones that old had, and it works had a fan on it you know what I'm saying it's just yeah. a bigger version yeah, of it you put a bunch of them in front of you the cool area. yourself off as you jam really hard dude yeah. it's yeah. a brilliant machine I bet you also like the the hand uh, what was that thing called the erg or whatever where you do this oh uh, the hand did yeah. you like that no why why would I do oh, that oh I guess yeah, it wasn't yeah. cool enough. <laughs> They need to make an. They need to make a cardio machine that like makes you like saw wood or something at the same time. Yeah. Justin will be hell no, like machine. the the Vertimax or or not the Vert. What's oh, that the one that climbs. Yeah, the oh, one that climbs. Jacob's climb. ladder. Oh, Jacob's ladder. Why? Yeah, because ladder. because the Russian and Rocky Ford did it. Kicks your ass. That's why. <laughs> yeah, it's that's like exactly hard. Like why like why do cardio? That's like <laughs> yeah. you know. Hey, <laughs> I want to. I want to go back to our training and stuff like that because I think it's good for us that we 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 haven't talked a lot about this stuff in a while. Is sharing what's going on too, like diet wise. Like where are you guys at? Because everybody's kind of ramping up their training and their consistency like where are you all at with your diet and what are you doing right now mm. i'm just trying to clean it up you know <clears throat> just trying to like get back to the basics so no no single cheeseburgers no, no double. See, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> no, <laughs> i start i go slow i go very very slow so usually what i'll do is the first thing i'll do is i'll um i'll, I'll, I'll work on breakfast so my breakfast was you know a bunch of egg yolks and eggs and toast and that kind of stuff <laughs> Now I've brought it down to less eggs, a protein shake, and uh, there's no uh, no carbohydrates. Oh, so you're dropping calories, right? I'm dr now. I'm dropping just for breakfast. Then, then I also did a bunch of meal prep over the weekend, and right now I'm not counting anything. I'm just eating as much as I want, but making it whole natural kind of healthy foods. Um, and then the next step is I start to kind of bring it down a little bit, but we'll see. I don't. I'm not ready to cut yet. I'm not really ready to cut. I think I'm gonna just. Clean it up, eat better, yeah, and then see what happens, and then slowly start to cut. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Uh, so I right now I have to increase, right? So uh, when I when I'm inconsistent with dieting and training and stuff, um, my mo is like eating once or twice a day. So like, and that which is terrible for me for my size, uh, the amount of protein that I need to intake in a day just to maintain the the lean mass that I have in my body. So that's what happens to me is I, I get, and I think a lot of people think <clears throat> on the outside looking in, they're like, oh, you look fine, you know, because I don't, I don't blow up when I, when I'm off my diet or I'm not eating well, um, I don't like all of a sudden get massive and big. What I do is I, I lose muscle and then I start to get a gut is what happens mm. to me. So, and that's because, uh, not consuming enough, uh, good protein and training consistently. And then if I do over consume on the calories, it's, you know, sugar, carbs, it's bad food. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's actually like introducing foods, right? So getting back, to, I was getting, I wasn't eating breakfast for the longest mm -hmm. time. So back mm -hmm. to like consistently eating a balanced breakfast, and that could look like different things. So yesterday it was, you know, oatmeal, blueberries, strawberries, walnuts, and then some uh, whey protein. Uh, was it? Uh, I think the day before that, I think I used Magic Spoon. Today was scrambled eggs and sourdough toast. 
So I, for me, I, I know that I have to bump protein up. Like I know that even though I'm not tracking yet and I'm not there yet either. So right now, similar to both of you guys, I think, cause like nobody's tracking, I'm not tracking either. Mm-hmm. I just know that it's really, really low. So I'm just conscious of like making sure I do that first. I'll probably start tracking next week sometime. Actually, I, I lied. I am tracking protein. That's the only thing that I'm tracking. I'm trying to get 100, 180 to 200 grams a day and then everything else uh, uh, I'm not tracking. And you know, when you do it, it's actually, especially when you're above uh, 120, 130 grams of protein, it's not easy. To yeah. eat that much protein, it really isn't. Once you start to track, you're like, man, I got to yeah, eat a lot of- Yeah, it's pretty difficult. I, I know. That's why that's that's the main focus initially is to just start really like making sure I'm consuming the protein. And uh, breakfast has always been one of those where I'm like very low uh, in terms of calories. And so just beefing that up quite a bit uh, and getting protein and focusing on that first thing for me is, has helped quite a bit. Well, yeah. If I, don't get, if I don't get a good solid 50 to 70 grams of protein before noon, I'm playing catch up all day. Yeah. Mm. That's why I have to have a, you know, at least- least a, a good solid breakfast that's got a good 30 you to said grams. magic spoon what does it yeah. look like serving wise so you? oh by the way remember when the last time we did a magic spoon commercial we were talking about like how many cups is normal yeah mm-hmm. so i was like you know what i need to just to double check like our our advice on there or, or what we were saying what looks like a bowl it, three three cups it three is, cups yeah. is like a what a standard you know bowl sizes for like you know your 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 uh, dishware or whatever uh, and it's not like full all the way to the brim. It's not half. How many grams of protein was that? Was that that's, so that's four servings. So a serving is three quarters. So I believe there's uh, there's what ten in every every serving, if I remember recall right, Doug. So that would be forty grams of protein. So it's forty something grams of protein. Yeah. And are you doing dairy or are you mm. doing almond milk? So I, okay, I normally do almond milk, but because uh, Max, we, we, once we took Max off of uh, breast milk, we put him on to uh, um, uh, grass fed organic vitamin D. So I've actually been, I haven't had that in like years, yeah. vitamin D milk. I haven't oh, had so that's like, what I've been running on for. Oh, oh yeah. See? <laughs> <laughs> of Just, course, that's of why course. you see it in my physique. <laughs> <laughs> it does a body good. It does right? a body good. Yeah. He, he goes down smooth like whole yeah. milk. Oh, so, yeah. Hold on. So have you tried the, have you seen the A2 milk or whatever? Have you seen the label of that? A2. That I looks- think it's the A2. I think that's what it is. It's a, it's a easier, more digestible source of protein. And it's supposed to be better better for kids. So I don't know. Look into it. I did a little bit of research. Oh, interesting. A while ago. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, we were going for the the most whole natural version I could, which is the grass fed organic vitamin. When D, my right? older kids were little, this is when you used to be able to buy unpasteurized. Yeah, I wanted raw to do. Milk. I wanted to go raw. Dude, yeah. you can't find it. Yeah, you can't, I, I wanted yeah. to go raw. I tried to convince you to go that, but you just you can't find it anymore. You can't. I used to. There it is. Yeah. So it's a two milk. Apparently, it's a different type of protein in the milk, and it's easier to digest. I have to do more research on it. Um, it's not even a commercial. Is it all it. thin or is it like uh, nice and creamy? No, it's still it's still the same yeah. same kind of milk. <laughs> guy, Come needs, on, man! This guy needs whipped cream in his throwing, cereal. Throwing like some weird A two B two niner like <laughs> fucking milks out there. You know what are you doing? <laughs> You've been doing vitamin D milk this whole time. Yeah, damn, bro. Oh, yeah, I go home like like why mess around? You know, like. <laughs> Get all the get all the vitamins bro, and nutrients. Vitamin D milk, cheese, bro. I don't know, dude. This is a lot of day. Hey, I can handle it. There's yeah, people you, out there that can't handle bro, it. You the dude. toilet oh, yeah. would disagree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It agrees. The car yeah, chase of the, that we see in the toilet afterwards. <laughs> no, you know what though? I'm jealous because I wish, I wish I could have dairy for the sole purpose of being able to have milk. So it's I can, nature's amazing yeah, protein. I mean, you, I, mean I, I feel like we're oh, I don't know. I, I haven't I'm not sold yet on Justin yet on his tolerance with it, but I know that. I have a better tolerance for it than you do, but I, totally. I I can't go too far. Like so, I can totally have a bowl of cereal with vitamin D milk, totally fine. I could totally add cheese to my you know chicken tacos that I make, totally fine. But if I sit and have like a a good sized bowl of ice cream, or I have like milk and even a small serving of ice cream or something in the day, that's just that's too. I much. wonder what would happen if you just took uh, lactase, the enzyme that breaks down. So lactose. I've never done that before. I bet you it would help you because I can't do dairy proteins. <laughs> So I could do no lactose. I can do that all day long. Still messes me up. But some people, if they take a, a, because lactate pills are cheap. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. I know you carry them everywhere. No, no, I don't have lactate pills anymore. And that was at the Tahoe house? Mm, That's not for me. That's Doug's. That's mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I've been meaning to try that. Does it it make you able to have dairy, Doug, when you do that? Yeah, I can have a certain amount, but it doesn't 
completely take care of it. Okay, mm -hmm. see, that's probably similar, right? Maybe I can get away with a little bit more, but I notice like, it, so if I have ice cream, right? So if I decide like I'm going to treat myself and have, I have to have a very small portion and I have to be cognizant of what I ate the rest of the day. So if I, I couldn't have done like vitamin D, magic spoon cereal for breakfast and then cheese on some chicken tacos and then have a bowl, I'm fucked. Too much. Too much. Yeah. But if I did no dairy really all day long, I can probably get away with, especially mm. if I trained, I noticed too, like if I've trained really high and my body's depleted, I can handle a little bit more. Yeah, see, just this conversation is going to mess up my stomach. That's awesome. <laughs> I am to I'm dairy. super intolerant I, to this. I tell you what, dude, I wish, I wish I could. Be, so when I was uh, younger, I went through this bulking phase. And one of the most effective things I did was I just drank a gallon of milk every yeah. single day. <laughs> yeah, that for sure caused it. It was cheap, you know, you just buy it at the grocery store. Oh, I drink a lot of milk. Too, milk yeah. tastes good. You, you know? did that too. Do you like that too with milk? Yeah, at least. My yeah, little was, brother was like, like that. Two gallons a week. Yeah. He would come, like, we go play basketball or something. He'd come in and he'd be so thirsty and he'd pour a tall glass of milk to quench his thirst. People you, in the Midwest do that like crazy still. Really? Yeah, yeah it's like a thing. They drink like milk with dinner. Yeah, is that what you do? No, I don't do that. So no. how do you have your milk then if you have so much? Uh, well, I don't need more. He, like, bathes, uh, he bathes in it. Yeah. You saw the Magic Spoon no, I do magic. I'll definitely put whole milk in Magic Spoon and, and you know, like oh, enjoy that's that. That's so good. Makes yeah, me so, so jealous. So, oh, dude, you, dude, know what, you know what, though? It. Here's the thing, though. So I was I was born on that, okay? And then at way, like probably by high school, I was down to like 2%. By the time I got into like, like lifting weights, I was down to like non-fat non milk. Oh, yeah. That's so disgusting. I know. What I a know. waste of time. I know, I know. Then we went that way. And then like now I'm like, you know, almond milk, macadamia milk, things like that. Macadamia mm -hmm. milk's amazing. And I and I like all. Yeah. I actually prefer it. I you know even though I'm in I'm okay with that's like, how that's how good you are at the psychological piece, Adam. You think I think, I've yeah, closed myself yep, really well. One hundred percent. You're really good at that. And <laughs> hey, hey, that's a testament, dude. If whatever you're doing, if I've, you can convince I've yourself not, it's better, nut milk and nut cheese. I have I'm a closer. I'm the best at closing myself for <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, tell me that that you don't have to do that to yourself when you're changing. Yeah, the way, no. You know? Well, geez, I mean, uh, I mean, so much of what we talk about in everything, right? When it comes to nutrition, exercise is psychological, and if I tell you what, I, you know, I just tell clients this. If you come into workouts saying, I hate workouts, I hate this. You're going to hate it. You're yeah. going to hate it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, just reframe that. And, just, and even if oh, it's I had a, to do that with fish. Even if you're lying to yourself, yeah. lie to yourself for a while. Wait, Sooner or later, it'll become the truth. You did that with fish? You still hate fish. What are you talking about? Uh, no, you said that. I didn't say that. When did you like? When do you like fish? I've been telling myself that I like it like for the last <laughs> Is like, it two years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't go I, out of my way to get I it. I call bullshit. Hey, I don't go hey, out of my way to get hey, it. Hey, you fish fish doesn't count. Say that you're fine. Yeah. You're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Really? What kind of fish do you guys eat? Salmon. Salmon. Yeah. Keep it. What's well, he? Basic, now, here, here's the thing. If you don't like fish, and trout. Salmon like is not a, a good call. Like if you don't like fish, you should go with uh, like things like uh, halibut. Yeah, to, all the halibut. whites. All the yeah. whites. Tilapia, sea bass. Those are good fishes. If you're not tilapia, a big. Eh. It's Sam. Right. Everyone goes to salmon because salmon's like one of the best nutritionally. Yeah. yeah. But it also tastes fishy. Yeah. So if you want, if you're well, not my a brother in law goes all the time up to Alaska and like so we've been taking some of his salmon that king salmon that oh, he gets up I there. Bet that's amazing. So it's good. Yeah. So we'll barbecue it or whatever. You it's know good. what the trick is with salmon mm. that I learned from Doug a long time. Uh, I learned it from Doug back when uh, Doug when you and I went down to San Diego for that <laughs> convention years ago. He names his fish. <laughs> yeah, he makes friends with it first, yeah. <laughs> and then we Look, eat it. Nemo. Yeah. <laughs> no, here's the deal. Uh, salmon is way better when it's rare. Like it don't. Over, if you if yeah, you make it rare meat, I love I I love. If you uh, fully cook salmon, it's not good. Yeah, if I, it's yeah. nice, and Doug taught me that. We went. I remember we were down there and we were ordering food, and he ordered salmon, and then he told the guy, he goes, but uh, medium rare, and I'm like, I don't know, you could do that with fish. So I'm like, let me give that a shot. Way different. So my favorite sashimi mm. is it sashimi? Sa sashimi. Yeah, sashimi. Sashimi. Yeah, sashimi. My favorite sashimi is salmon. So mm. that's why I always order. I like it like that. I don't like salmon cooked. No, mm. cooked and it gets in your teeth and then you, yeah, you get the after burp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not good. I used Ooh. to eat tilapia all the time, but that's yeah. only because I thought you were <laughs> you made you leaner. Yeah. No, it, the, it, you know what the bodybuilding community says microwave. that it thins your skin. That's like the, that's a myth that's going around. It's still around too. Oh my god. And I, I want to say, I want to say it was a. It thins your skin. Yeah, who came up with that? Yeah, it's a dumb like one of the one of the pro bodybuilders that like used to say that. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. You, I bet you, you could look it up. I, what, yeah, I bet you could look up. Pro bodybuilder says uh, tilapia. They're like, I don't know why, but when I switched from steak to tilapia, I got leaner. Maybe because yeah, the calories, less are, calories. That's, well, that's exactly what yeah. a lot of them. A lot of them they go on this diet because it's been it's been passed down, right? So this, I remember seeing this going like, oh my god, I just want to punch myself in the face. It's, it's six These, meals of it. Yeah, they would. So they oh, it's it's the final three weeks to prep, and they would switch over. To tilapia 
and they all thought it was like this magical thing in tilapia. I'm like, no, you idiots. I'm like, it's like literally a hundred calories. That's why. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just eat less, eat less of your steak or have ground turkey instead. Like Jesus, you know, have a little bit of variety I, I there. I will say this though. Tilapia is very easy to cook and eat. It's like, a garbage fish though. It eats off the fucking bottom of the floor. Bottom right. feeder. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. a bottom feeder. It's yeah. A, yeah. You're eating a bleh, flounder. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's like, uh, do you guys like mussels? I don't mean like on my body, but you know, like the shell, <laughs> the shellfish. I just really like. All excited I just like. Yeah, I like them on your body. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's I mean, mussels eat the garbage of the sea. So it's I've never been a big and... muscle no, muscle eater. Yeah, God, really. Just yeah, yeah. convincing for me. To eat really? I mean, I'll do it. Like if it's in like. A, what about like, clams and? Uh, mm, I will. I will, I'll have them right if someone's serving them or like I like oysters. Like barbecued oysters are cool, mm -hmm. but. I'm not. I'm not a big. See shellfish. tilapia, easy. You you you. If you make it in the oven, put some lemon on it, and it's super light, and you can yeah, eat a ton do that of with, it. You do that with halibut, though. You do that with halibut or sea bass, and you get the same same experience, and it's a better fish. Isn't sea bass more expensive? Uh, yo, yeah, tilapia is hella cheap. Well, that's, it's, again, it's that's cheap. What I'm saying it's cheap because it's nothing. It's, it's, <laughs> they're made up of garbage. They eat, they eat garbage. Air fish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and everyone gets, oh man, you can buy cases of this stuff Ooh, for like good. twenty bucks. Like, yeah, no shit. It's a hundred calories of nothing. That's why <laughs> <laughs> they use it to clean the sewer water. <laughs> yeah, I dude. used to eat it all the time. Uh, well, it it's the, didn't thin the, my skin. In the, yeah, in the bodybuilding community, it is the staple. Tilapia. With uh, asparagus. asparagus, yeah, because yeah, asparagus is a natural uh, what you call diuretic. Yeah, rice. diuretic. Thank you. Nah, it just makes yeah. your pee smell. Yeah, so they so those that's like the staple like bodybuilder final two or three weeks. No, I did. Yeah, and they moved from chicken breast. It used to be chicken breast, chicken breast, chicken breast. And then it was like, no, it's tilapia. Yeah, I did everything. I was you know, ground turkey, steak, you know, mm -hmm. what whatever. Like I just calculated my calories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was pretty actually simple. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to switch to tilapia. Yeah, I feel my beef for me still to this day is the best uh, source of protein. I just feel my best. Yeah. Easy to digest. Definitely. So uh, I most energy. I agree with that. Although I do know, and I haven't done this though, and I've wanted to do. Uh, I think I'm the only one who hasn't done the carnivore diet, right? You got, mm. you both have, right? I mm -hmm. I did it for a second, more as an elimination, but yeah. Oh, you did. So you didn't do like the full thing. I did it for a short, relatively short period of time. Yeah. So when I when I eat a lot of red meat, um, I I tend to not feel great. Now here's a problem with that is I it. it I don't. I've never teased out like burgers and shit with that. Like mm -hmm. if I'm eating tons of red meat, a part of that is like cheeseburgers and mm -hmm. shit too. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I. I've never done like pure like grass fed, good, healthy meat and done like a whole carnivore diet to see how I feel. But I I do feel like if I over consume, if I'm eating all of my protein sources coming from red meat, that's what the best I ever feel is rotating. Mm -hmm. Is week by week. Like looking at last week, what was it mostly? Did I have a lot of turkey? Did I have a lot of fish? Did I have a lot of red meat? Yeah. Whatever it wasn't, that's what I'm doing the next week. Yeah, I felt it was it was actually really nice uh, from my digestive system, but uh, it was surprisingly, but at the same time, it was like such a chore. It, I, I was not eating enough calories. It was like if I really wanted to to eat the way that I should have, I should have even incorporated more more meat every day. And I just was like, oh, I was like overwhelmed. Yeah, with people it. like I lose, you know, I lose weight when I do the carnivore diet. Well, yeah, you ever eat just steak? It's, yeah, dude, it's it's well, hard to do. After a That's, couple days, I don't want to eat anymore. Remember, yeah. we did keto, and I was still in the thick of uh, like I was just coming off of bodybuilding, mm -hmm. so I was like two twenty five or so, and trying to do keto and like eat enough calories to like you were just eating just oh. Macadamia nuts. And oh avocado yeah, liquor. I remember Tony. I remember I came to you one day. I'm like, this diet is stupid, Sal. I'm like, this, I'm like, you literally eat like six of the same things. He's like they're eating a stick of butter. Yeah, yeah. He said it to me like yeah, I was the inventor. You know what I, mean? <laughs> like, I didn't invent it, bro. Why'd yeah. you do this to me, Sal? Well, I was so angry at that time at him because he was like all. Remember, you know how he gets like uh, when he gets keto excited about something. Sal, yeah, remember, he was yeah. like all keto guy going yeah. all about I it. I am very convincing. Yeah, and I'm like avocado, <laughs> macadamia nuts, bacon, and steak every day. Like, yeah, I'm like I'm cool with that. Yeah. yeah. Our first caller is Julia from San Diego. Hi, Julia. Hi, guys. How are you? Good, good. So what's your question? So in the past probably six months, I ran MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Aesthetic in that order. Uh, loved them. Had great results. Really liked the, I really liked the three-day program as a teacher. It just works with my schedule. And in that time, I've reversed from 1,600 calories to 2,500 calories. Wow. And I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling good. Yeah, it's been a really good journey for me, and I don't feel done yet, so I want to reverse up to like 2,900, 3,000 calories. Um, so I'm thinking I want to do one more program before I start a cut. So I was thinking about doing performance for the last program in my reverse, but my main question is what should I do for my cut? 
I was thinking aesthetic would be a good program to go back to just with all of the super setting. It had a lot of endurance in it. And I'm just kind of wondering what would be the best program for that, because it'll be my first time doing a cut with a program like this. Great question. First of all, uh, awesome yeah, job. Congratulations with that. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that on the podcast because oftentimes when we talk about getting your metabolism faster, sometimes we get pushback from people in academia and say they'll say things like, oh, it doesn't boost that much. But, I mean, you went up tremendously. Did you gain lots of body fat in that process? Or were you able to maintain yourself somewhat while getting your calories to go up that high? No, I think I definitely have gained weight, but it like it looks good. It's definitely – something I needed to do. It's been uh, all positive, but there's definitely been body fat, but more muscle than anything, I would say. That's excellent. Okay. So if you want to continue to reverse, especially at the amount of calories that you're able to eat now, which is very decent uh, for a female, you might want to go with a program that's more strength, a little bit more strength focused uh, for the reverse. So I would to continue to go up in the calories. So MAP Strong might be uh, a, a more effective program specifically for that. And then when you cut, MAPS performance would be an excellent mm -hmm. uh, program to cut with because of the athletic component, the mobility component. And the endurance phase at the yeah. end. Oh, yeah, all the endurance phase. Um, and the focus is on performance, which is something that's good to do when you're cutting because mm -hmm. it keeps your mind uh, focused on how you feel rather than how you look, which is, in, our, in my opinion, always a better uh, approach. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah, so, I love that. So, so, so when you as you're reversing out, as you continue to bump up the calories, map strong. Then when you're ready, oh when you're ready to cut, go to maps performance. And when you cut, you could probably start by dropping uh, below, you know, 300, 400 calories below maintenance. See how that feels. Watch your body fat. Make sure you test your body fat percentage rather than just watching uh, the scale. Uh, okay. uh, one more question, Juliet. Where did you notice uh, most of the muscle gains in your body? Oh, honestly, probably my upper body with my arms. I don't think I've ever trained my upper body as much as I have with anabolic and aesthetic. I feel like as a female, we're just, you know, inundated with workout your posterior chain and all of your lower body. So I definitely saw more upper body, but I think that's just because of my past. Okay. And did, did you notice any other changes, uh, energy, sleep, libido, anything that shows that your hormones were in better balance, all that stuff. Yeah, definitely. I think libido, everything has gone way up. My deadlift went up 45 pounds. Like everything has just been so much better since starting MAPS program. So I'm excited to do more of them. Oh, that's awesome. And then do you have MAPS Strong? I'd even ask you if you had that program. I don't. I don't have Strong. I have performance though. Okay. Well, you have it now. Doug's going to send that over to you. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I'm so glad that we have someone live talking about oh, yeah. boosting their metabolism because I've had people tell me when we tell stories, they're like, that can't happen. Bro, that's yeah. phenomenal too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we've tried to, to explain that a lot, and it's it's so much better coming from somebody who's actually going through that oh, process. Oh, I, I mean, how easy is it going to be for her now to get lean? Because yeah. now she'll get lean, and she'll probably still end up yeah. with more calories than she started with. Oh, yeah. Eating a comfortable amount. Oh, yeah. No, she'll be able to lean out in, in low 2000s, yep. which was more than what she had when she started, which is, in my opinion, this is where most people should be. Like, So rarely ever did I get a client who I thought that like that okay that needed to lose 10 20 30 doesn't matter how many pounds they want to lose weight and they came to me and I thought that they their metabolism was in a really good place to start with I always wanted them to speed their metabolism up first which is hard cuz mentally mm -hmm. you tell somebody who comes in says hey Adam I want to lose 20 30 pounds right. and you say hey I don't want you to lose any weight let's let's build your metabolism let's reverse diet for a while first get you up to 25 26 3000 calories then we cut you and I'm going to cut you on a, on a calorie intake that's higher than where you're currently at right now. Right. And a lot of people don't think about the, the how they're going to stay uh, at a particular uh, you know leanness. They think, yeah. oh, how am I going to get there? Then they forget they got to stay there. And if your metabolism's fast, staying there is a lot easier. And it makes it more enjoyable, right? Like Otherwise, it, it just feels like you're, you're depriving yourself and you're struggling through your workouts being you know on a low cut like that. Totally. Now, real quick, because some people might not know what a reverse diet is or how that works. So, so in a nutshell, we've done topics, single topic episodes on this. So you could actually look this up on our Mind Pump Media app where you can look up episodes. But in a nutshell, essentially what you're doing is you're focusing on building muscle and strength and you're slowly increasing your calories. So it's usually 100 calories more a day for a week or two. You know, wait till your body settles and then repeat that process. It's a slow process, but it's very effective at boosting your metabolism. 
Our next caller is Sandy from Texas. Hey, hey Sandy. Doug tells us that uh, Sal's your least favorite host. Tell us why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, man, I can't do that. <laughs> hey, so so what's your question? How can we help you? Uh, so I'm calling in regards to um, I'm working on getting better sleep. Um, I finally clicked a couple months ago about I should probably be getting more sleep, but I'm having trouble staying asleep. Um, I was wondering if you guys had any tips or any supplements y'all recommend to help me stay asleep. I'm sleeping on average about six hours. Okay, that's a great question. When did, uh, let me ask you some more questions because I need a little bit more information. When mm -hmm. did these sleeping issues start for you? Uh, honestly, I haven't slept that well since I was in, since I was in high school. Um, and then when I joined the military, I just didn't get much sleep. It, it didn't help at all. Yeah. Um, and then once I started listening to you guys, I was like, well, maybe I should start, uh, working on my sleep. But yeah, that's where I started kind of uh, uh, noticing that I couldn't stay asleep. Okay. So, so, um, in my, ex I've worked with quite a few clients who have served, uh, in the military, by the way, thank you for your service. Um, thank and you. one thing that I notice in common is that they tend to have sleep issues when they're done, uh, you know, when they're done serving. Um, was it difficult to get good sleep when you were serving? Was it because you were, uh, because of the schedule yeah. or because of the stress of being, you know, uh, you know, somewhere else or whatever? Did you notice any of that? Um, to be honest, I think it was just poor decisions on my end. Uh, I didn't really put any uh, importance to it. Uh, and I guess I just kind of got used to it. Uh, but I didn't really, uh, maybe the, yeah, a little bit of the scheduling was, was a factor there. Uh, but I think majority of it was, uh, just bad decision, bad planning. Mm. Sandy, have you tried masturbating before bed? <laughs> Works for Adam. Uh, no. <laughs> don't answer <laughs> that. Tried you should answer that. That's an absolute, there's, I just, I was just watching a video the other day and, and of mas guys masturbating before was, bed. No, I, video that, I was in that, uh, that the, there's actually a hormone that's released that pairs with testosterone that works like a sedative. So it's, uh, it's actually proven to help you sleep. Yeah. Unless you're looking at the computer screen. Science. The well, screen. yeah, yeah. Hopefully you're using your imagination and you're not using the computer screen because then that's <laughs> yeah. not going to work very well. Ah, that's boring. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays that's boring. Um, Sandy, do you drink coffee or caffeine? Do you take caffeine during the day? Uh, in the mornings. Okay. So first thing I would do is I would eliminate caffeine. I know this sounds for a lot of people, it's like a pain in the ass, but it actually in studies makes the biggest difference mm -hmm. for people, even if the caffeine that they have is first thing in the morning. So that's the first thing I would do is I would slowly reduce or completely eliminate caffeine. The second thing I would do is I would do a sleep routine. So I don't know if you've heard us talk about this before on the podcast, but an hour before bed, turn off all electronics or wear blue light blocking glasses. Um, I would take it to another level. I'd say as soon as the sun goes down, you either either one, put on blue blocker glasses or shut lights down, go by candlelight and really limit yeah, your you amount get of those salt lamps and, mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, limit the amount of television, phone or computer time at night. Yeah, that makes that make those two things right there make the biggest difference. And then in terms of supplements, I've personally tried a lot of sleep supplements, and uh, there is nothing that even comes close to the Ned Sleep uh, mm -hmm. blend. I that stuff is potent. Um, oh. It works every single oh, time. Oh, it'll knock you out. I mean, we've done melatonin, we've done all kinds of stuff, and that was like the first time where I, I just went out like literally like a brick. That yes. being said, amazing. though, check the big boxes first. Yes, yes right? exactly. So like, don't don't you? I wouldn't uh, recommend to a client to use Ned and they're on their computer till midnight or staring at their phone in their bed. Like I would tell right. them to get rid of that right. stuff first. And and or invest in something like a pair of blue blockers that you can wear when the when the sun goes down, those things should make a bigger difference. And then like Sal yeah. said, the caffeine ch check the big boxes first, and then if you're still having mm -hmm. trouble, then I would then I would. How, how late are you eating too? Um, so I eliminated eating too close to bed because uh, I've you know I've been listening for a little bit. Uh, I think the latest I'll have anything is maybe around uh, six or seven when mm -hmm. I get off of work, uh, mm -hmm. and then. I was also, I didn't know if maybe working out too close to bedtime uh, might affect it because typically I'll, when I get off of work, I'll have something small, go to the gym, and then uh, I'll 
come back and shower and hit the rack. Yeah, yeah. No, working out uh, about two hours within two to three hours before bed can definitely affect sleep uh, negatively for uh, some okay. people. Um, and uh, especially if you take a pre workout, but if you even if you don't, the workout itself can make it difficult um, to go to sleep. So you want to give yourself at least a couple hours before bed. But honestly, if you eliminate the caffeine, do the sleep routine, mm -hmm. um, you should notice a significant improvement. And also remember, this is a practice. So it takes a week or two before you really start to see consistency in terms of uh, how it's working. So don't just do it once and then say, oh, it didn't work. It's not working for me. Like anything else, it's a, it's a routine. It's a practice. After doing it for about a week or two, you should notice uh, some improvements. Okay. Awesome. All right. All right, man. Thanks. Thanks for calling in. Hey, thank y'all. I appreciate everything y'all do, man. Thank, thank you, man. Yeah, you know, sleep. Um, you don't like my masturbation uh, tip? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? That doesn't make you guys sleepy right before uh, 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 or right after, excuse me. Uh, I mean, if no? you haven't had good sleep, you know, it's always an option. Yeah, wow. I guess so. Wow, yeah. Jesus, you guys. <laughs> you you know, know what? There's, there's certain kinds I mean, of that's, interventions. That's El Natural, too, dude. That's as natural as you can get. Yeah, I guess yeah. you're right. You know yeah. what, though? Seriously, though, it's, uh, you know, how many times I've, uh, towards the end of my career, at least, this wasn't in, at all for most of my career, but towards the end, just getting people to like kind of take it seriously just made all the difference. In the yeah, world. well, that's why I, I I wanted to reiterate that after you guys went the Ned direction because I mean Ned's amazing as far as how it works, but I'd always rather see a client first check the big boxes first. Totally. I mean, if you're because almost everybody, especially today, right today with our cell phones, yeah, you gotta get uh, it to the root of it. It's rare that I meet somebody now and I and if I ask like, do you look at your phone in bed like when you're in bed? And everybody they say, does. Yeah, everybody does. Yeah. Very few people I know have a good practice where they put their phone away or, or don't take it in yeah, the bedroom. Or they watch TV before they go to bed. Right, yeah. right. And the caffeine thing is huge for a lot of people, even if they do it first thing in the morning. Because I know they say don't have caffeine past, I think, 2 or 3 p.m. But uh, I've worked with people where it doesn't oh, matter any time they have it. I notice it with me. It's if I, As soon as I get over – so, like, you know, a pre-workout is like 300, 350 yeah. for, like, milligrams. If I'm at three, 400 milligrams, it don't matter if I have it at 6 o'clock in the morning or, or not. It affects now, your sleep. Yeah, it affects my sleep. Now – it really affects my sleep if I do it beyond three, four o'clock mm -hmm. in the afternoon. But it don't matter. Even if I'm taking it in, I just it's I'm not as uh, not as relaxed when I go to bed at mm -hmm. night. All right, our next caller is Jackie from Michigan. Hey, Jackie, what's your question? Hey guys, um, I had a couple questions, um, but one that I was really wondering is Adams talked a couple times in the past how he was trying to catch uh, Sal's deadlift, and I'm kind of having some issues right now with deadlifting, and I didn't know if he had any advice on. Um, like anything specific that he did or any type of like um, extra exercises that really liked helping get there. Honestly, what, uh, what did it was I had never put that much focus on deadlifting consistently. So I was deadlifting at least two, if not three times a week to try and do that. Now, keep in mind when I say that, um, I'm not uh, lifting like max intensity three times a week. So I'd have one or two really hard training sessions a week. And then the other one would be like form and technique, or I would do like deficit deads, or I do snatch grip deadlifts. And so I do different variations <clears throat> or even switch up to sumo every now and then. But really is, uh, I, it stopped, uh, I stopped doing a lot of other back exercises in my routine. And then the deadlift just became like the primary focus ran very much like a, like, I don't know if you follow maps, power lift, or if you have that or not, but a, a, a program more like that that's just focused on a few lifts and getting good at it. Trying to do it in a, like a full bodybuilding routine and catch someone like that would, would have been impossible. So I had to focus all on strength and doing it two, three times a week. Yeah, I'm training right now. Actually, I'm hoping to do a first powerlifting meet in March. Oh, I mean, awesome. I'm in Michigan, so a lot of our stuff is shut down like you guys. Um, so I, do you have any um, specific uh, mobility exercises too that you think would help specifically powerlifting? Well, that really depends on you, right? So I'd have to, it, it depends on where you're like. So mobility stuff for me was hips and ankles were like my limiting factor, right? But if you have good hip mobility and good ankle mobility, that's not a big deal to you. So it really depends mm -hmm. on where you see the most deficiency or breakdown in, in your form. And yeah. Do you, do you have any areas that you notice uh, you, you might think you need to work on mobility wise? Yeah, I think definitely my hips. Um, I haven't actually ever had pain. I used to do bodybuilding before and I never really got any pain from lifting, but ever since I've been really increasing, um, you know, going a lot heavier doing the power lifting, I do kind of get some hip pain. So I went through, I've done the uh, webinars a few times, so that oh. definitely helps. I can feel a big difference do when you, I do that. Do you have MAPS Prime Pro? 
I don't. Every time I go to buy one of your programs, I can't decide which one I want and I get really overwhelmed. And so I'm like, no, I'll wait and I'll think on it some more. So um, that's definitely something I'm looking into. Okay. So we'll send you Maps Prime Pro. um, So you'll have access to that. And then what I suggest you do is go through the the hip, um, the foot, and the ankle sections. Do some of the movements, see which ones give you the most impact. And then practice them on a daily basis. The best way to do mobility is to not treat it like a workout in the sense that you do it, you know, for 30 minutes straight, you know, two or three days a week. Do it 10 minutes, twice a day, three times a day. Focus on the movements. Get really good at them. Uh, but both, but Prime Pro has a lot of options for uh, for those areas. I have a couple more questions, too. Are you uh, conventional or are you sumo deadlifting? Well, I am conventional. And I, I kind of get frustrated because I see that like, so I know a lot of girls pull sumo and I feel like I should be able to, but it's just, it's, it, it feels better. But more recently when I've been going up, I get really bad low back pain when I pull conventional. Mm, okay. Yeah. You might be right with your hips, the, the hips might, and that might be why it feels more comfortable conventional. How tall are you? Uh, five, six. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. I think sumo would ideally, but if you have, if you are limited with your hips, then working on your hips would be yeah. ideal. What about uh, hip thrust? Are you doing any hip thrust? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I do those about twice a week. I okay. hate them, but I do them. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. What's your, what's the, what's your deadlift stuck at right now? Uh, 290. Oh, yeah, that's good weight though. Yeah. You're doing yeah. especially you're, conventional. Yeah, yeah. You're doing phenomenal. Yeah, I just started three months ago. So I'm, oh. I, I had like a really good shoot up and everything like bench is going well, squats going well. And then that deadlift, I just get, re- I'm getting real discouraged on it. So okay. Is this your first competition that you're entered into? Yes. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Uh, phenomenal. Okay. So here's something that worked really well for me. I noticed the biggest carryover from my squats to my deadlift. So my squat would go up. My deadlift would go would go up, but then at one point, I started to notice a little bit of pain near the SI joint. I don't know if you know where that is, but the SI joint is near the lower back, but it's kind of to the side a little bit. So it feels like mm-hmm. it's like hip low back pain, okay, if that makes any sense. Is that where you're feeling some of yours? Yep, because I get that sciatic nerve sometimes too that mm-hmm. goes off there on that side. Okay, uh, lunges did a phenomenal job for me. I was able, when, because I noticed I could squat heavy, then I would do lunges and the lunges were just so significantly weaker. I didn't have good split stance strength and stability. So I started to practice lunges and it made a huge difference in my deadlifts because I think it balanced me out. Um, so maybe try doing some lunges, some back step lunges mm-hmm. or walking lunges might help you out. The other thing we didn't address is uh, sticking points. Do you have any sticking points? Like, do you, are, 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 are you better? Get up off the ground. If I can get it up off the ground, I'm pulling it all the way. But for some reason, it's just right in that beginning is where I see you tend to get. So mm-hmm. deficit, dead, deficit. Oh, yeah. So deficit you- deadlifts with lightweight uh, should help with that. And mm-hmm. then uh, that even, that makes me even feel stronger about split stance exercises for you, like walking lunges. Yeah. I think that awesome. might, might help you out. Awesome. Thank you very much. No problem. And, uh, and I hope you, hopefully you enjoy Maps Prime Pro. And if you have any questions, just shoot us a DM, okay? Thanks a lot, guys. No problem. Awesome. Wow. I mean, talk about strong. I mean, do it. you yeah. know, part of that is is being okay. This is one of the things, too, and I didn't get a chance to say this to her, but you know, uh, when you start getting a little bit of uh, progress and seeing like, you know, your weight go up mm-hmm. or you're getting, and this could be both on, from an aesthetic side or even a strength side, you know, we, we just, I think as humans, we want more, we want more, we want more. Yep. Mm-hmm. And there is, there is a point too, to like, Hey, you're doing hella good. Three, yeah. three months into like sh- strength training and power lifting. Be encouraged to, by what you've already been yeah. seeing. And hitting almost 300 pounds, yeah. conventional deadlifting. That's really yeah. good, man. Now, and here's the thing too. Uh, 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 when you go from bodybuilding to powerlifting, there's a transition where, and it's, I mean, it's powerlifters have to go through a similar transition when they go to bodybuilding. They have to learn how to focus on the movement, not the muscle. Yeah. I've, I've done this with totally different people. technique. Yeah, and it's like they deadlift and they can't help but like, oh, I feel my lats, I feel my back. It's like don't feel anything. Yeah. Just perfect the movement. It's all about the movement. It has nothing to do with feeling in the muscle. And then the reverse, you work with the power lifter, and everything they do is about the movement. You're like, no, no, you got to move it's in a way. It's funny. To I see it all the time. Like just like that stiff movement, like the transition from bodybuilder to going into powerlifting. You know, having to kind of go through that of. The movement can be smoother, and the more smooth you you get it, the you know the more weight you start stacking. It's pretty it's pretty crazy. Totally different mindset. Our next caller is Chandler from California. Hey, what's up, oh, Chandler? Where are you at in Cali? Hey guys, uh, South Bay area. Oh, oh no, cl- you're, you're in our to neighborhood, us. right? Yeah. Right in yeah. our neighborhood. We're in San Jose. Yep. Yeah, close by. Good deal. What's your question? 
So you guys have talked a lot about like the, you know, maintenance stuff, physical things you can do to work out when gyms are opening and closing. But the question's more so, I guess, on uh, like a mental approach to dealing with, you know, you get one month back in the gym, closes back down. I'm sure a lot of people like me are trying to spend that one to two month rebuilding, getting back some of the progress that they lost while everything's closed down. So kind of what advice do you have on the mental side of things? Like, how do you approach it? How do you think about that frustration of having to restart over and over? Mm, uh, so you couldn't find a speakeasy gym, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one or two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's, that's a good question. Um, I, I cannot imagine how frustrating that would be. That would really irritate the hell out of me if I was reliant on a gym uh, for my workouts and having to stop in between. This is when uh, discipline plays a big role. Okay. So discipline takes over when motivation and excitement uh, go away. So you're going to the gym, you're excited, they got equipment, you're having great workouts. Next mm. thing you know, Emperor Newsom says, gym's <laughs> got to shut down. Yeah. So now you're at home and you don't have a lot of equipment and it's not as fun. This is when discipline takes over. I do want to ask you though, what do you, do you have anything at home? Do you have exercise equipment home? Yeah, I, I have a couple kettlebells, uh, bands, pull-up bar, so pretty standard, you know, it's enough to get by. Mm -hmm. What are your fitness goals? Well, before, you know, it, when the gym's open, it's usually strength focused, a little bit of powerlifting, but, you know, staying well-rounded and just working on my numbers on the main lifts. Dude, have you ever done a pure kettlebell workout, like just kettlebells? No, maybe half a kettlebell workout with, you know, uh, just replacing normal exercises using kettlebells, like doing rows. Uh, holding them on my shoulders for squats, things like that. Yeah, you can get some phenomenal workouts with just uh, kettlebells. In fact, we have a very uh, not so well known program that we made a long time ago, uh, kettlebell for aesthetics. Um, I'll have Doug send that over to you. It's all based cool. around uh, kettlebells. I have something to add back to the like the mental aspect, which is what you originally kind of asked for, right? We can sit here and talk about how to make a workout great out of the equipment you have, but I, I do understand the 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 frustration on, and on the mental side, right? You just feel like you get some momentum and then kind of smacks you in the face and says, you no longer yep. can you use this gym. So I want to address that because this reminds me of the the feeling that I had when I came off of testosterone and. I went through kind of like this depression and, and I was not motivated to lift. And so I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm going to go play basketball. That'll, that'll keep me, you know, moving and active. And I love the sport so much. And then I tore my Achilles and I was just like, man, I can't win. Uh, and so I was down for a little bit and, and that what made me really reflect and realize that that's just one aspect of, of growth and health. Right. So we we tend to focus so much on the weightlifting part and the nutrition mm -hmm. part, and we talk so much of that because, of course, those are those are big rocks and 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 make a big difference in your overall health journey. But there's other aspects of that. You know, when you talk about mental health, spiritual health, relationship health with your your spouse or your friends, um, and so I, I started to shift my mind in that direction uh, and started getting back into like reading a lot more, and so maybe look at other aspects. Of, of health that you that that nobody else can control right that nobody else can tell you you can't do and make that the the primary focus during a weird inconsistent time with the gym right now and really dive into that and maybe that's nutrition for you because you're at home and you still can cook and do the things you want or maybe that's reading maybe that's walking with a partner whatever it may be or maybe that's meditating or starting to focus on mobility maybe you were like me where you neglected that for a long time and you know you need to do more of it and you're not so find something within the the health sphere that isn't something that Newsom can control that you can put your main focus on and just kind of shift that as your top priority and start to put a lot of energy towards that. That'll I think that that shift will will help the mental uh, aspect of how you feel discouraged when someone yeah. keeps shutting and opening the gyms every other week. It is very discouraging a lot of times, you know, because these are uncontrollables and. Uh, you know, to be able to shift your mindset towards now what I can control and, and, and go through that, go through like what you can actually do and what, uh, you know, you tend to enjoy. And so for me, it's working out outside. So I want to focus more on opportunities for me to bring uh, my interest in, in health and fitness and bring that, you know, in an environment where I can still utilize it. And then what that looks like and start structuring it in a way where that matches with my lifestyle. But really, just yeah removing 
all of these uh, things that can seem like it's it's imposing on you like uh, and just really kind of focusing on reframing it all towards the direction of uh you know where you want to take it personally yeah it's it's fitness is a tool use it uh for the context of what's happening right now and right now um you like justin said there's some uncontrollables mold your fitness around it change your focus like adam said i think that's that's a phenomenal advice and then discipline plays a big role now. Now uh, you're going to work out and you might have to just go and work out rather than being excited to work out. You're like, okay, I'm supposed to work out today. <clears throat> They're supposed to work out today. There's no gym. You know, I heard the guys talk about discipline. I'm just going to make myself work out and I'm going to mm. do what I can. And you know what ends up happening is that discipline then turns back into yeah. motivation. And also learn a new skill. I mean, it's a great opportunity. Like we and, and Sal had mentioned earlier, uh, you know, the kettlebell for aesthetics. But there's also like these skill sessions in there where you actually learn the technique and the proper technique to do uh, a kettlebell swing or a windmill or Turkish you know, get up, Turkish or- get up. Some of these more complicated moves that we just get so busy in our own routines all the time uh, that we don't spend that that quality time on really sharpening our skill. Yeah. One one last piece of advice, Chandler. This one really important okay you ready yeah make sure you sign the recall for gavin newsom yes please <laughs> <laughs> hey thanks for asking a question right. uh we we appreciate it thanks yeah, chandler yeah thank you, you guys thank you man appreciate it guys thanks man that has to be so common right now like how especially yeah. in california like how many people that we have that like are, have a serious goal dude it's so oh, it's depressing I, it's so frustrating because what we've seen in other countries they've actually done studies on this on other countries on the places with gyms gyms have a lower transmission rate uh for covid than almost anything else people don't work out when they don't feel good um so there's that self selection bias yeah. and then look at the the and again i'm not a doctor okay so i'm going to preface this by saying this but Look at the comorbidities that cause the severe symptoms. All of them are these chronic health issues, obesity, right. diabetes, yeah. you know, the, the, these blood clotting issues that COVID causes. Exercise. It's so therapeutic. It's so mentally liberating. Like we need an outlet like that and to take and remove that away from us, I feel is a disservice. But Absolutely. I also, you know, this is an opportunity too to shift your focus, yep. you know, and we, we talk a lot on the show about that. It's not just about the the weights, you know. It's not always got to. You can still be a very healthy. I, I am nowhere. I'm nowhere near close to the uh, you know iron strength that I was four four years ago. But as far as my overall health, when I talk about mobility, my relationship, like staying active, moving, that type of stuff, you know, reading all these other aspects that mm-hmm. that make me better in my whole health journey. A lot of those don't require the gym, yeah. and instead of letting the, somebody else, uh, you know, frustrate me because they're telling me I can or can't do something, I'm going to focus on the things I can control, and maybe an area that I know that I could be better at that I know mm-hmm. will serve me, and then I'm going to pour yeah. a lot of my energy there. There's always opportunity in hardships. That's very empowering. You can come watch Mind Pump uh, as well as listen to Mind Pump on YouTube. We're on YouTube as well. Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. Instagram is the place we're most at. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug, the producer, at Mind Pump Doug. For most people, a full body, you know, three day workout uh, is, is superior. It just works best for most people. Yeah. That being said, there's some benefits to splits, especially for people who are advanced and who are doing uh, high volume workouts because it, it, you know a full body high volume workout can take can take two hours plus. Um, so splitting the body up in that case makes